We're going to begin with that breaking news in the Middle East. We have been following all afternoon Iran launching a massive missile strike against Israel. Yeah, most of the missiles were intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome, and so far there have been no reports of any injuries. The U.S. is saying that the attack was defeated and ineffective. The question now is how will Israel respond and how much closer does this escalation raise the likelihood of an all out conflict? Eyewitness News reporter Josh Einerger, who has traveled extensively to Israel uh, to cover this conflict, is in the newsroom following it all very closely for us. Josh, what's the latest? Well, Dave and Liz, it's now one in the morning in Tel Aviv. The skies over Tel Aviv and Jerusalem are quiet once again, but Israel is on red alert after this barrage of ballistic missiles just after dark this evening. There could be some hope that the lack of casualties and serious damage could, like the last time Iran attacked Israel back in April, give Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his war cabinet at least a degree of pause when it comes to calibrating their response. But then there's this statement from the IDF just a few minutes ago. Iran's attack, it said, is a severe and dangerous escalation. There will be consequences. It rained missiles over the state of Israel tonight. The Islamic Republic of Iran firing 180 projectiles, ballistic missiles toward the country's populated center, including the middle of downtown Tel Aviv. Israelis hunkered down in safe rooms throughout the country as the nation's missile defense system, with help from the U.S. and Jordan, knocked most of them out of the sky. The word fog of war was invented for a situation like this. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan reported only one casualty, a Palestinian man in the West Bank, due to falling shrapnel. And so far, despite minor damage like this in neighborhoods around Tel Aviv, no known impact on any military assets on the ground. In short, based on what we know at this point, this attack appears to have been defeated and ineffective. This was first and foremost the result of the professionalism of the IDF, but in no small part because of the skilled work of the U.S. military and meticulous joint planning in anticipation of the attack. Iran took responsibility for the attack, which it said was in retaliation for Israel's campaign against Hezbollah, the Iranian-backed terror group in southern Lebanon, which the IDF in recent weeks has all but defanged. Israel has promised a serious response. Meanwhile, around the same time Iran launched the onslaught on Israel, terrorists opened fire on commuters at a light rail station in the seaside neighborhood of Jaffa in Tel Aviv. And there were six people who died in that attack. Nine were injured. No reports, no uh, claims of responsibility, I should say, after that attack. And it's also not clear if it was intended to coincide with this Iranian attack. Uh, air raid sirens were blaring overhead as authorities and paramedics rushed to that scene to help the wounded uh, just uh, as it was getting underway from Iran. Liz, Dave. You know, Josh, tensions between Israel and Iran have been high for years now. And Hezbollah is backed by Iran, as we know. How is the U.S. trying to de-escalate the situation as Israel finds itself in a conflict with Hezbollah, Hamas, and now directly with Iran? So, it, 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 you know, David, it, it really seems like we're, we've been heading down this path for, for decades, quite frankly. It, Iran had propped up these, these satellite organizations. They're called proxies. Hezbollah is one of them. Hamas is one of them. And, of course, Israel, just in the last couple of weeks, has devastated Hezbollah. Hamas has been seriously degraded. And just yesterday, Netanyahu all but dared Iran to do this. And, and so here we are today. Uh, the U.S. has uh, been working very hard behind the scenes to try to find diplomatic solutions to a lot of these things. But even today, uh, a stark difference in the language that we're seeing from American officials who've spoken in the last hour or two, who have basically said that they are there to support Israel. Uh, and, and there's been not much uh, in, in the way of preaching calm publicly, all they've really said is that the attacks, uh, the counterattack from Israel will likely be very significant. Josh, you mentioned the U.S. We did hear Jake Sullivan in your piece just a few minutes ago talking about the U.S.'s involvement in today's um, assistance with Israel. Can you talk a little bit more about that and the U.S. role there? Yeah, the U.S., much the way we saw it happen firsthand back in April, the U.S. has assets in the region, uh, a, 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 a 
naval assets that were able to fire uh, missiles that took down some of these ballistic missiles that came from Iran, uh, at least 12 intercepts that came uh, from U.S. naval assets uh, in the Mediterranean. Uh, and there have been other uh, assistance uh, in the skies as well, both from the U.S. Air Force and the Jordanians, uh, much the way we saw last time. And it does look like they were able to repel uh, the majority uh, of this onslaught as it came uh, through the sky over Jordan and, and right into is, uh, Israeli airspace. Uh, so, you know, another night they're trying to declare victory and mm -hmm. hopes, Liz, that it will kind of ratchet down the tension on the Israeli side when they decide, uh, as they decide now how to respond. Uh, but it does certainly appear to be a, a pretty dramatic escalation uh, in a region that really is on fire. Yeah. yeah, very much so. And in fact, as as everyone's watching where this is going next, there's a lot of questions about will anybody else participate? Any word whether there are any countries who will enter the fray? Uh, well, so not yet. They're, they've all keep, they're all keeping this extremely close to the vest. This has been Israel's fight. And, and actually, if you look at the last few weeks against Hezbollah, you know, Israel has taken a lot of flack for the war it's prosecuted in Gaza, which has had the effect of degrading Hamas, which mm -hmm. is uh, an Iranian uh, proxy, right? So Hezbollah is the other one. It's actually even bigger and, and more organized than Hamas. And in the last couple of weeks, Israel has all but destroyed its capabilities uh, to fight, and it's done it all by itself. And interestingly, when you talk about other countries getting involved, there's been very little criticism of Israel for its actions over the last couple of weeks, because uh, Hezbollah is kind of universally known in the in the Western world as being a terror organization. Uh, it's been responsible for the deaths of hundreds of Americans over the years. Uh, so, so Israel really has been on its own and has taken one, they have said, for the team, if you will. The question now is, uh, what happens with Iran. Uh, the U.S. is committed to defending Israel. They say Israel has the right to defend itself. Will the U.S. get involved in an offensive strike against Iran? That's when things uh, could get very hairy. So, you know, we'll have to see. Yes, yeah, some 40,000 American troops in that region. All right, Josh, thank you very much for your insight on this continuing and very fluid breaking news.